There's weddings and civil partnerships based more on love and common commitment than any type of divine fiat for, uh, for marriage. Uh, and then they've got distinctly humanist funerals where they focus more on the life of the individual rather than um, the life of the world to come, which they don't believe in. They also have their code, um, you know, their, their ethics. Um, you know, there, well, there's one argument that says atheists, how, how can they be moral? How can they have a code of ethics because they don't believe in a God? And so where, do there's, where does their morality come from? Now, atheists will be the first to say, hey, we can be kind people. We could be good people. We don't kill people uh, more than religious people kill more pe uh, people. In fact, we'd say that religious people kill more people than we do. Uh, and so they say we are perfectly moral and perfectly capable of acting ethically and creating our own code of ethics. Uh, there's quotes out there like this, there's probably no God, now stop worrying and enjoy your life. Uh, this is kind of an Epicurean atheism, you know, just enjoy yourself. Uh, but on Freya says that the atheist ethic is to enjoy and make others enjoy life uh, without doing ill to yourself or to others. So that's kind of a baseline of atheist ethics. Now, some people ask, where does this come from? And there's a lot of discussion about where this type of morality comes from. On for himself says this is still a very, uh, the atheists most often uh, still carry a very Christian-based morality. But Dawkins, in his book, The God Delusion, argues for a purely naturalistic explanation for morality uh, from an evolutionary point of view. Um, it says that moral decisions and altruism find their basis in our biology and our psychology, not in any type of uh, spirituality. There's also a growing community. Although most atheists go it alone, as Prothero wrote, uh, there's a lot of groups that are out there, a lot of online groups as well. Uh, some of the groups that you might hear about, Atheist Alliance International, the American Atheists, uh, various humanist associations, uh, Skeptics Anonymous, or Skeptics Groups, the British Skeptics, American Skeptics, uh, the Brights, this is a very quote-unquote evangelical atheist association uh, founded by, I do believe, Daniel Dennett and Richard Dawkins. So there's a lot of these groups out there. Um, one thing that's, that's notable is that in 1961 there was a Supreme Court decision that included uh, kind of this discussion of secular humanism functioning like a religion. And so, in a way, they, they noted the communal aspects of, of atheism, the, the cultists, the creed, the code, all of that being very present in secular humanism. But they noted that in terms of its community, in terms of its sociology, uh, secular humanism functioned very much like a religion. Now, let's take a look at the demographics of atheism worldwide. Uh, looking at this, the darker it gets, the more atheist it is. Notice that China... Um, is very atheist. Uh, Sweden, very atheist. A lot of countries there in Europe. Also note Vietnam is very atheist. Um, note Canada is a little darker. Russia, very um, very dark as well. Um, Japan, very dark. Australia and New Zealand, a little darker. South Africa, pretty dark. Um, really the only dark country in Africa. Um, and then even America and, and, and Mexico, North America being very dark as well. So just seeing that the highest prevalency is there in China, Sweden, Japan, Vietnam. Uh, look at this thing. Again, Prothero says that uh, atheism is, is only prominent and influential in Europe. But, you know, you see that with Sweden, Denmark, Norway making the top five. But you also see Vietnam and Japan being in the top five for the top 50 most non religious nations. So two out of your top five are Asian nations. Um, the same kind of continues there uh, in the top ten. You get South Korea thrown in there as very non-religious as well, although the rest certainly are European there in the top ten. But still, uh, you know, six out of the ten being European, four out of the ten uh, being Asian uh, is significant. Sorry, seven out of the ten being European, three out of the ten being Asian being very significant. Um, differentiation. So you might see Prothero's thesis being torn apart a little bit there, that it's really only uh, important in Europe. It, it also has an importance in Asia. But also in the top 50, uh, you've got Australia, which arguably is probably European, but continuing, uh, you know, Taiwan and North Korea being uh, very uh, non-religious, China, as we saw on the previous page, Singapore, uh, and all that. You also get some other nations as well. The United States, uh, it, it makes the list. Dominican Republic, Cuba make the list as well. So it's going on in other places in terms of the top 50 nations, but most notably in Europe and Asia, certainly. Now in America, now flip your understanding of the map. The darker it is, the more religious it is.
okay? So you see Mexico being overwhelmingly religious, about 90% Catholic. You also see some of the northern nations and, uh, the, you know, the, the northwest there, uh, your, your Minnesotas, your North and South Dakotas uh, being very religious, uh, and the South being very religious. You also notice the, the Eastern uh, Canadian area, Quebec, being very religious, uh, very Catholic still. Uh, but a lot of nations, they're very light. Uh, Alaska and a lot of Canada being pretty light. That The lighter it gets, the more non-religious it is. Um, so just an interesting map of North America based on a, on a pew forum poll. Now, one thing is that atheism is growing, or non-religion is growing, and Christianity is declining in the United States. Um, again, here, uh, according to a poll in 2008, uh, Christianity decreased to 77% from its former number, 86%, and atheists have gained ground in every state, with 15, 16% of Americans now identifying themselves as non-believers. Uh, the greatest gains uh, for atheism, places like Vermont and New Hampshire, uh, Least amount of gains, Mississippi. Um, but also notice there, California. Everyone always says California. Oh, they're all liberal, atheist, and all that. Let me just note, being a native Californian, we're not as atheist as you think you are, as you, as you think we are. No, I can't say that. The reason California is so light is it was pretty atheist to begin with. It was pretty close to that 15 to 16% mark uh, in 1990 and really hasn't changed much since then. Uh, so... It's not necessarily saying that these states aren't very atheists. It's just noting the change from 1990 to 2008. Again, up in the Northeast to your states having the greatest percentage gains being even over 20%, uh, being Vermont and New Hampshire. I also want to make a note here um, about the 15 to 16% of American, athe uh, of American atheism. Um, you know, that's really... I think probably closer to the numbers we're going to see in baby baby boomers and um, you know my generation generation X and 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 Y or millennials or whatever it is, um, not being as represented as baby boomers in these numbers. You look at my generation and generation X. You're looking at twenty to thirty percent being atheist. Uh, in the baby boomers, you're looking at probably ten to fifteen percent. So, in a lot of numbers and a lot of polls, the difference between generations is almost doubled from baby boomers to Generation X to Generation Y, uh, we've got higher numbers in younger generations. And so you see atheism growing more and more in the years to come here in the United States. Now, interestingly enough, too, here, here's a, a breakdown of the conception of God in various religions. Um, you see the four different categories, the net belief in God, okay, being the kind of adding up all the numbers, and then what people think about God. It's a personal God, impersonal force, um, not quite sure. Um, very interestingly, only 98% of Protestants believe in God. And 72% of them believe in a personal God. And that's very interesting. It's very, very interesting. Okay? Uh, others are saying it's kind of an impersonal force, which very much goes against what Protestants believe. Uh, and then another 7% say they don't know. So they'll self-identify as Protestant, but then it kind of breaks down uh, in belief. And you can go through all the different uh, types of, of Christians, and then you can go through other religions, um, Jewish, Muslim, Buddhist, and Hindu. Again, Buddhists, 75% believing in God. Uh, very many of them will, can be atheist Buddhists, okay? Uh, or atheist Jews as well, uh, another prominent force. Uh, unaffiliated, this is interesting. Um, people who don't belong to church or are unaffiliated with any type of religion, 70% of them still believe in God. In fact, those who say, oh, well, I'm not affiliated uh, with any religion, but I still consider myself very religious, almost 100% of them, 94%, still believe in some type of God, okay? And very interestingly, people who self-identify as atheist, 21% of them still believe in God. Six, in a personal God. That is very interesting uh, statistics. Again, maybe people not understanding the definitions or uh, maybe just in the way they define themselves, it doesn't quite match up with what they actually believe on both sides of, uh, of the coin. Uh, again, to illustrate this, um, religious self-identification of the 5% of Americans who do not believe in God or a universal spirit, 14% of them are Christian. 10% okay? are other faiths. So one-fourth of the people who say we don't believe in God or a universal spirit actually find themselves sitting in church, going to temple, uh, all those different things. They, they will self-identify as religious, and particularly religious and Christian or some other faith, uh, but yet do not believe in God or a universal spirit. 
uh, whereas the rest of them break up in kind of nothing in particular, atheist or agnostic. 